going to flatten that pulp of wall a little bit. We'll we like, to, we like to have this uh, reverse curve all removed on an inlay. That's one of the major differences in the preparation of an inlay as compared to an amalgam. In the case of the amalgam, we like that reverse curve so that the enamel can protect the fragile amalgam so that it won't chip at the margin. And the foil is finished. When we finished the foil, I can truthfully say I've never seen a perfect one. You just do as well as you can under the circumstances. Well, this is a first premolar. It didn't really have enough resistance form in the cavities. To have all of this large casting hanging on this little dovetail is just too much. When we're designing the cavity for each individual tooth, we have to decide what is the least destructive preparation we can make for that tooth and still place a permanent restoration for them. Now you're going to hear me talk a little bit about a distal hollow grind preparation on a cuspid. And this is one that we did before we had the distal hollow grind preparation. These were done with the 7404 also, but not the Brassler type, which are more pointed. They're two different shapes to that 7404 burr. And we do use the one that has been altered for these potholes. It shows that cuspid the slot inlay on the cuspid, which I just described to you. You can see the retention form from between these walls. And you can see the internal bevel on the gingival. Quite a nice outline. 